John, I first I want to say I've been a huge fan of yours for years and years. In fact, I even oh, bought this. You. I bought this when it first came out. <laughs> that book got me got so much clown. trouble, bro. No, no, no. I've got Ghetto Clown uh, stashed away somewhere. I uh, I was just curious, since you wrote that like midway through your career, do you think you'll write another autobiography to uh, cover the back half? I think I have to. I think I have to. I mean, I wrote it kind of young and I maybe shouldn't have because it caused me a lot of problems um in, in the industry people don't people don't like to be talked about unless it's glowing and you're you're on their jock but since i was saying kind of like you know tales out of school i got kind of dissed by a lot of people so i think yeah i'll, do, I'll wait till i'll till, till i'm ready to retire <laughs> then, it, then then there's no backlash i can't wait uh I, i'm ready for the john wick stories man um as a oh, guy, i got some i, I got some, bro, about john wick too i got plenty <laughs> I can't wait. Maybe another like 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 I don't know, 10, 20 years or something, we'll get that book. Uh as a guy who's done, I'm sure, a ton of interviews, what's the one question you hope nobody ever asks ever again? <laughs> this question never ask again. Yeah, I, I hate when they ask you, what's your worst experience? What's your worst movie? What's the movie that was the biggest box office flop? It's like, I don't want to talk about that stuff. Until my book comes out. <laughs> uh, amazing. I just wanted to know what not to ask uh, for the remaining nine minutes of this interview. Uh, you, actually, I, they, they've already talked about how Tommy Ricola, he's confirmed that they're working on Violent Night 2. Is there any chance Mr. Scrooge might have a more evil twin brother who wants revenge on Oh, Santa? shoot. Come on. Who you been talking to? I'm not. I I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I can't reveal anything, but. You might, you might, you might know. You might see me. <laughs> no, Violent Night is available to own on digital and blue right now. Uh, are there any deleted scenes with Mr. Scrooge specifically that you're excited for people to check out? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I lived a ton, man. I sang three different songs as I walked in. Uh, I'm hoping one of them pops back in. Uh, I can't remember off the top of him right now. It was, Murder bells, murder bells, killing all the way. That was I thought that was a good one. Tommy picked the other one though. Bye, I learned nice. Um, yeah, this the this stupid shit that I did all over the place that I that I can't wait to see. That's awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Uh, now, Mr. Scrooge is only one of many incredible villains that you've played. I mean, Billy Blanco, the Tybalt and Romeo, coolest guy on the planet, uh, clown and spawn. Which villain was your absolute favorite to play? Oh man, that's a tough question. Uh, mm. I gotta say, clown for some reason. Um, really, because of the level wow. of difficulty. Yeah, and, I can imagine. Uh, I really wanted to make the comic book character come to life, and it was really difficult, but really fun. And I got to ad lib a lot and and make up all these lines with Mark DePay, the 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 director. Uh, uh, I and and, and Tar McFarlane, I love him, and and he gave me he gave me the leeway to do whatever I wanted, and I did whatever I wanted, and I had a blast. It was so it, it was so freeing to be that villainous and crazy and ridiculous, and and I, I don't know, I pushed it to the max. Yeah, oh, you did. I mean, I, and he's so spot on as far as how it looks in the comic book too. Speaking of Todd, shout out to Todd. This is this is my boy Todd here too. I I love Todd. He's great. Uh, I, Todd you know, is, is a, that, he know he 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 published my first comic book phenom x oh really i didn't know that and he drew the first cover oh that's amazing Yo, that's my boy that's he's my the coolest boy. dude ever i love todd coolest yeah, I dude ever most talented do you know they're making they're making another spawn movie with jamie fox right if they asked you to be clown again would you be interested or are your knees too shot for that now i don't know if i can play clown again if i can if, if lightning strikes twice like that you know uh but i love to do a cameo somehow yeah yeah i, I base like just you being clown and and also in moulin rouge when you're on your knees the whole time I, like i'm 30 uh i'm 39 now but even back when i watched it then i was like god dang that looks painful i don't know how you you just hung out on your knees the whole time like that well both of them are different both of them are different like um uh, spawn i squatted so i had a squat and they knew that i only had like 10 minute shots at me because then my legs would collapse i did have the tightest buns in hollywood for a while <laughs> but that, that i would i would stand up tall i mean if, if i i because either i'm gonna fall or i'm just gonna just my legs are gonna give out so i had we had 10 minutes to get it uh 
Rome, um, uh, Moulin Rouge, they built leg prosthetics, like tiny ankles and, and feet that I had to learn how to balance on kneeling on, on a prosthetic. So I had to learn how to balance and, and kick it forward. Oh, that's so that's so cool. And it, they both sound equally painful. Um, oh, yeah, they are. They were. Now, is there any character that you've only played once that you would just jump at the chance to play again? Benny Blanco. I, I would like to play that again. I like to have his own like his own storyline, you know, that that yeah. could be exciting. His his uh, taking over the whole entire city, whatnot. Billy Blanco was awesome, man. Shout out to Billy Blanco. I also want to say, I mean, you just you've built up this incredible filmography. What what's one film that you're the most proud of that you feel like maybe at the time it came out deserved a bigger audience than it got? Uh there's a few of those, but I, I would say I would say Summer of Sam is one of my best acting, I think. Um but the past, I think the past is interesting because you know, when I go to Comic Cons, kids always want to sign a past picture or they have a past dvd or even a vhs of it or a poster and i'm like what really you love this movie you go yeah that, that opening credits of the movie was the funniest thing ever it was it was like get out before get out because i'm being hunted by this great white hunter who wants to put a puerto rican on his mantle so it was kind of like get out before get out yeah no i was actually when i asked the previous question about a character you wanted to play again i like low-key fingers crossed hoping you were going to say the past I know everybody's asking. Billy Blanco is a great answer. Everybody's too, always asking for a sequel of that, and I'm like, I don't know. I think I aged out of playing that kind of hyper silly. I don't know, but it would be interesting to see what happened to that guy. You know, 20, 30 years later, like, like that's an interesting character. Like, how does that character age? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How would he age? I mean, I hope he did age because otherwise he's a he's a he's a silly buffoon. Or he's got to mature. I mean, mature is what we mean. Does he mature or or does he stay a uh, man child forever? Right, right. That's, you know, I, uh, I feel like all that happens is we just calm down a little bit, but like, I'm right. still, I'm still a man child. I mean, I'm still an idiot. Yeah, I'm still an idiot, but just calm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I also, well, you I mean, hope, I'm, you hope that you can maintain, you hope you can maintain. Exactly. And now I'm with comicbook.com and, uh, you know, I know you voiced the Riddler on the, uh, the Batman audio adventures. So, you know, have there ever been any like Marvel or DC characters that you've had conversations about playing or you just are interested and you would love a, you know, a crack at? Oh, here's another one from from my future autobiography. Uh, I was supposed to be the vulture uh, instead of uh, what's his face and uh, Michael Keaton. Is that? Mm -hmm. And you know, we had negotiated, and I was about to play him, and then they said that you know Michael Keaton wanted it back, and they asked me if I would give it up and i said well okay i guess and they said no we'll work with you again we're gonna yeah that's what happened there and so where's your other role at uh they offered me something tiny i'm going nah nah, no no nah. not mr leguizamo nah. no thank you no nah. um, but yeah well, that that uh, behind the scenes i never i never talked about that but that's the first time i, I ever yeah, talked i didn't know that at all that's incredible um you know i i know I know you're, I'm sure you're talking to a few people today. I don't want to take up a ton of your time, but I, I dude, I'm such a fan. I really, oh, like, thank you, Chris. Thank you. have been involved in my life in some form or fashion <laughs> for like 30 years now. And like, I love, I love Tibble. I like Romeo and Juliet was a very pivotal film for me. I don't know how to explain this. Then I started the movie as a child. And when it finished, I was a man. That's all. Uh, that's the only thing I can say is that, like, I suddenly was like, "Oh, wow, girls!" And uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was it was great, dude. So uh, this has been a real treat for me getting to getting to talk to you and ask you some of these questions. So Pleasure, man. Pleasure. Uh, yeah, I hope I get to talk to you down the line. Oh yeah, we definitely will. Definitely will. Absolutely, man. Well, uh, have a good uh, day, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Peace out, man. Much Thank love. You, John.